Greetings, everybody. This is Dinosaur George from DinosaurGeorge.com, answering the questions I get from around the world. This is episode 178, and in it, we are highlighting a T-Rex toe claw that sits on a removable base. It is item 3014. It retails for $20. It is, it's cool because it comes off of the base. So the base makes it neat for display purposes. It sits on there neat, but it's cool because you can pick it up and look at it three-dimensionally. This is a really nice piece. Tyrannosaurus Rex is giant, and who wouldn't love a beautiful toe claw? For you men out there, if you have a wedding anniversary coming up and you're wanting something to give your wife that she will go crazy about, give her a T-Rex toe claw. I promise you, she will go crazy. No, I mean, crazy like nuts crazy like okay whatever all right let's go desiree from sacramento california hello dinosaur george i have two questions for you today well desiree guess what i got two answers for you so what do you think of that i've read some articles hypothesizing that theropods could swim what are your thoughts on it and secondly what is the most dinosaur fossil dense area in the world thanks for your time these are good questions desiree okay um could theropods swim? I believe all dinosaurs had the ability to swim because you have to. At some point in your life, you're going to have to cross river that's deeper than you are tall. You're going to deal with flooding. You've got to cross water. And so I bet theropods could swim. I'll bet you they did a version of the doggy paddle where you would have seen the head above the water and you would have seen the tail, but the tail wouldn't be moving like a crocodile to propel it. I think the tail just simply would have been held out behind the body, maybe using it as a little bit of a rudder, but I think all the propulsion would have been the back feet. I think they just would have kicked and pushed with their back feet, maybe using their hands, but not really because their hands are not made for this kind of swimming. Their hands are made for frolicking. So, <laughs> so... I think they would have done the doggy paddle and I think that they would have been semi-efficient swimmers. As for your questions about what is the most fossil dense area in the world, boy, a lot of stuff comes out of China at a couple of those formations, but I would say if you're simply stating about how many bones in one spot, it's got to be up there in um, Canada. Is it Pipestone Creek where they found thousands and thousands of bones on top of each other as far as they could see. I think it was all Pachyrhinosaurus. I think that's it. So that place was a huge conglomeration. Also, maybe a ghost ranch in New Mexico with the Coelophysis. Didn't they find bunches and bunches of those? Um, if you mean areas that hold a lot of bones, then certainly South Dakota, the Black Hills is great. There's places in Africa, there's places in China. But if you're talking about a specific area, then to my knowledge, it would be that spot in, in Canada, assuming I am choosing the right spot in Canada. Okay, James from Norwalk, Connecticut. Norwalk, Connecticut. Hey, DG, hope you're doing good. Hope you are too, James. I would like to know your opinion on there being two Spinosaurus species. Thank you, and I hope you get the time to answer more people's questions. Thank you, James. Doing the best I can, little brother. Are there more than two Spinosaurus species? I do not know enough about Spinosaurus to tell you. I simply know Spinosaurus aegypticus. That's all I know. Now, certainly there's Baryonyx and there's Suchomimus and there's Irritator and there's Megaraptor that are all offshoots of Spinosaurus, so there's Spinosaurids. So since there are Spinosaurids, it would make sense that there could be more than one species of Spinosaurus. I just am not familiar enough to give you a definitive answer, my friend, but that's a very good question. All right, Fade from Stockholm, Sweden. Hey, DG, this is my first time sending a question, and I hope you answer it. Well, think of that, Mr. Fade. I'm glad I'm able to do that. If the toe claw of a raptor broke, would it be possible for it to grow back after a time, or would it stay broken? Hope you understand my question. Have a lovely day. Thank you very much. This is cool. First time anybody's ever asked me this. All right. Raptor claws are covered in keratin, same stuff our fingernails are covered in. That covering was, could be broken and regrow. It would regrow throughout its entire life. But if the actual core inside was broken, then no, I do not believe it would heal and grow back again. Because if the damage to the core occurs, I think that it would cause the keratin covering to either cease to grow or grow in some funky angle, meaning that it would no longer be sharp. I don't believe 
that a raptor would survive if it broke its claw because that's its main killing weapon. Now, if it is an animal that's involved in pack hunting, it certainly has the ability to still use its teeth and claws and the other foot to inflict injury, but it would ultimately, I think, lead to its demise because it wouldn't be as efficient. That's a brilliant question. Same thing goes with uh, uh, hadros, I mean, uh, ceratopsians. If they break the outer part, I think it grows back. If they break the core, I don't think it ever grows back. Okay, Kyle from Sheffield, Yorkshire, Britain. Uh, Yorkshire, Yorkshire or Yorkshire? I guess you guys pronounce it Yorkshire, Britain. Hi, DG. Do you think that Dilophosaurus bridorum is a valid species to Dilophosaurus? Thank you for answering my questions. Okay, same thing I just said about uh, earlier about, about the two Spinosaurus specimens. I know that there is an Asian Dilophosaurus and there's a North American Dilophosaurus. I don't know enough to know what was it, weather eye or something like that? I, I know that the North American specimen is distinctively different from the Asian. I've looked at the skulls of the two. So there clearly are two different species, but I do not know if that is what you're referring to because I don't know this, the science, this, the, the species name of the other Dilophosaurus from Asia. I don't know what it is. So. I know there are two distinct species, perhaps you may be referencing a third, but I'm just unaware of who it is. All right, David from Grants, New Mexico. Hey, DG, how you, how's it going? Good, buddy. I was wondering, Jack Horner mentioned plans to create a dinosaur by nudging chicken DNA so that it would have long tail and teeth. Could the same process be done to create a mammoth by nudging elephant DNA? Thanks and have a great day. I don't know. Now, first of all, Asian elephants and mammoths are closely related. They are not closely related to African elephants. So you couldn't use an African elephant because its DNA wouldn't hold the same uh, sequences that would be necessary to make a mammoth. Asian elephants might. And since apparently it seems like what he's done with those chickens has shown that he can alter the animal, is it possible to do it with an elephant? I don't know. I don't know. Why wouldn't it? I guess should be the question. I'm not an expert in that. Maybe somebody watching one of these videos has some real in-depth knowledge about DNA and how that works. And maybe they can post the answer to it because I don't know. But that is a brilliant question. Wow. All right. Alex from Potton in Bedshire, uh, Bedfordshire, United Kingdom. Is it Potton? I guess it is Potton. Hello, DG. I wanted to ask, is it possible that all theropod dinosaurs ranging from Tyrannosaurus to Coelophysis, could have had hollow bones and large air sacs in their bodies to help them run faster, longer like birds. I'm glad you had the time to read my question and have a great day. Thank you, Alex. Hope you have a great day, too. Okay, I do know that Utah raptors have those sacs, and who else? Erosteon, he's another one that they found to have those air sacs. So I don't know why it wouldn't be possible for bigger Tyrannosaurus to have them. I do know that they have hollow bones. They definitely have hollow bones which helps them retain strength in the bones but still be relatively lightweight or at least reduce their body weight. So would it be possible that all theropods had that? I don't know why not. All theropods have a very distinctive similar body design, so why wouldn't it? All right, lastly, Ian from Hiram, Utah. Hey, DG, I hope you're having fun answering questions. I am, man. <laughs> All right, I have one. Can you tell me about Eutyrannus? I hope you can reply. Eutyrannus. Um, man, 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 man. Isn't he the early Tyrannosaur that came from Asia? The first Tyrannosaur to show dis definitively it had feather covering. So if he is who I think he is, he's a, I don't know what period he is, early Cretaceous or mid maybe, but he is one of the first Tyrannosaurs that absolutely demonstrate the, the, um, uh, the feathers, that it had feathers on its body. And that's about all I know about it. I know it's sort of a miniature Tyrannosaur. So I just, uh, Ian, I just don't know enough about him to speak intelligently. So everything would just be a guess. And I'd rather not simply take a guess. But I, I do think the one thing about him, he is the first one to have evidence of feathers. And that would suggest maybe all Tyrannosaurs are feathered. I don't know. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this. Go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com. Uh, while you're there, click on the Ask Dinosaur George page if you want to submit a question. I will tell you that I'm about to be on the road again for almost another month. So after I post a series of these, it'll be a little while before I post another one. So anyway, thank you guys so much. Uh, please uh, feel free to leave comments. 
I do read all of your comments. I don't respond to a lot of them because I don't have time. I appreciate when I have made a misstatement or a mistake and some of you will notate it. That's the essence of science. It's not somebody always being right and somebody always agreeing with the other person. It's about the sharing of information. So when I make a misstatement, I appreciate very much when somebody brings it out and says, I disagree because. I don't like when people are rude. That's, there, there's no place for that on my page and I'll just simply delete them. I don't put up with that stuff. There's no reason for it. If you, if you hate somebody who has a different opinion than you, you've got the problem. That's my opinion. All right, you guys, I'll cut another one of these in a minute and we'll see you in a bit.